script. They oh, see you. Oh, they live there when you're not there. Exactly. Oh, or that's better than when you are there. It also works where they live there. Like if they know that you work, you know, you leave the house at eight, you get back at six. Frogging. They will just like come down, be in your kitchen, use your kitchen during the day, and then they go up into your attic when you're home. How did you hear about froggers? I, I thought it was common knowledge. <laughs> it's definitely not. No, I've it, never heard it, of it. It wasn't. It wasn't common knowledge. Somebody, a screenwriter friend of ours out in L.A., Billy Chu, uh, tipped me off about it. Yeah. And I was like, man, let's uh, let's write a script about it. So him and I got together in Joshua Tree for a week, and just banged out a story of uh, a movie called Frogs. That's good. That hasn't gotten made, but. It sounds written. like a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's pretty good. Those kind of movies don't really get made anymore, though. You know, like, the 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 type of thing I'm picturing, I'm like, I don't know who would fund that or how that would fucking possibly get made. But back in my day, it would be a cult hit. I think it's possible. I think it's also, like, I like these movies where they use mainly real actors or real people as actors. Right. You know, so you kind of, like, go into a town and you're like, okay, this is the, the uh, stage of our movie. You ever seen Red Rocket? No. It's a new movie starring Simon Rex, if you may remember from MTV's TRL. Yeah, Simon Rex. Yeah. Wow. He hasn't. He's been off the scene for a while, but uh, yeah. I saw Kurt Loder in a T- uh, Tina Turner documentary. Oh yeah, yeah. He looks really, 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 really old. Well, he is. He was really <laughs> old. Like right. He was twenty years older than we all thought he was back it was in the day. Crazy. I was yeah. Like, Damn. Is this what happens? You just like I know. You, you grew up with all these people, and then they just get super old, and you're like, remember that person when they weren't this old? Oh, oh my god, crazy. I was like, Gwen Stefani was like my idol. Like well, I was she, like, she don't fuck their face up. Well, that's the that's, thing. That was the punchline of what Cass was gonna say. Like, <laughs> like for so long, Cass like, held dude, her up. Like you could really keep it going you know looking fucking fantastic you thought that was all natural up until that point <laughs> i don't you know you think that was just her first foray well i knew she like probably worked out really intensely and stuff and i don't know i but don't yeah. know how that it's a cautionary tale though mm. for who one i mean if I you're mean, gonna do it for I, young girls looking I, up to celebrities I, I don't think cosmetic surgery is actually like a bad thing especially if it makes you feel how like you see or want to see yourself like but within reason like if you push it to the point where you start looking like the cat people or like you know Mm. and you're like right some people might like looking a bit different or like looking different period you know like i'm not to say that i'm just saying i don't know if in this lifetime i want to look like a completely different person like i think i'd rather just age rather than do you think that's what she was trying to do or do you think like she's just like, whoa, I I I lost the narrative here. I can't even remember what I look like, you know. No, like, I think you just kind of get to this place well, where you have to fix certain things, and you think that okay, and then just somehow like it's kind of even looking at her. I'm like, wait, what is it that is not like it was? Like it's kind of hard. Her whole face. It's kind of hard to. Look. She doesn't even look like the same person. They could have replaced her with someone else, and you'd be. I saw. Yeah. A, I thought they, she was Iggy Azalea. I saw. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I saw one with Rachel Ray, and I guess she looks very different now. Was she the cooking woman? Yeah, but not because of plastic surgery. She just got like really like big and like no looks way. weird. Got like a, a bulbous nose and whatnot. Oh man! And so that looks kind of nuts. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it's weird to be a celebrity. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like when Zac Efron is redoing his face. Yeah, he got chin implants. It's bad. What about Tom Brady? You've seen this. Did you see Tom Brady when he came back from this little hiatus he just no. had? You didn't no. see. What did he do? First of all, you have to look at the pictures. I, and I like, I'm, I'm a Tom Brady fan now because he's not in the division. And he's, I can respect him. But yeah. like, coming out of college, he was balding, D- had yeah. this super <laughs> like wide chin. And yeah. now it has turned into literally like, a Ken doll and like when Holy he came back shit. it looks insane like it's just like visibly like what is going on damn so, my, so. I don't know I always thought like this was people's own thing but my mom was telling me that my uncle he got a chin implant or something because his wife is like come on you look so handsome with a chin implant like it happens with your partner too you know wow who says like oh, that would make me feel weird oh that'd be so weird fucking some like especially something like a chin implant i've never even heard of that till just now do i have one did he have <laughs> did he have like no chin was no, he chinless just, no 
I had to, he was an attractive looking man and but I think it was just one of those things that Does she, it look good? My mom says it looks he looks great. But I think what happens okay. is you're they're you're they're in a culture of like always traveling and going to hotels or resorts and what does you know, that have to do with a chin? I don't know. I think you're just surrounded by people who are also getting work done and you're kinda like it's Oh, you're like, saying you're in like the upper crust, so like to keep up with the Joneses, you gotta get the chin. Yeah, you don't yeah. wanna look like some schlub who hasn't had work done. Yeah. Yeah. I think I that's know. okay. If it's tasteful and it makes <laughs> you feel good, like I will probably get hair. No, no I'm, I'm going to. I'm not going to go bald. I'm not going to do it. There's no way. I can't. I, too much of my identity is wrapped up into that. I, maybe at some point I'll be able to let it go. And I'm not like even really like super on track. Like I, people keep pointing out there, like you still have like most of your hair. Yeah, you're, you're the fine. only person who doesn't like seem to recognize that. And you're almost 40. But no fucking way. Especially in Turkey. It's like dirt cheap. It's like that's where pe- Americans yeah. go to do it. And everyone in Europe. Too. Like even celebrities. Yeah. yeah like it's go and dirt do their cheap. Thing. And like yeah. they're all doing it and it looks great. And it's like, fuck it. I'm just holding out hope. Two things are going on with me. One is I don't want to get it done too early for a couple reasons. One yeah. is who knows what comes out. Maybe there's some like thing where it's really fucking super great. And it's not even like they're like sur- doing surgery on your head. Yeah. The other is, uh, you know, you just – there's no reason to rush and have to do it again if, like, I keep losing more hair. Yeah. So I'm trying to, like, find the sweet spot of, like – It's probably, like, 10 years from now, though. Yeah. You know what I'm I mean? wearing a hat because Denise cuts my hair, and it's been, like, a month and a half, and I literally look like a homeless person. It's so <laughs> unkempt, and it's so long. I'm like, shit, I can't go to, like, pick my kids up looking like this. I need a hat. I yeah. think that there was a time in my life when I guess going bald really stressed me out. But I don't know. What, I don't. I feel like once once I had cast locked down, I'm like, oh, whatever, bring it. And it, part of me not caring is part of my embracing of death and the temporary nature of everything. And I think, personally, it's sexy as hell. Well, I think it's, it's a high testosterone type of dude you know yeah i think and it's sexy i don't think, I think it's a bad thing men can start looking like fucking lesbians i don't think it's a bad thing but i also wouldn't be doing it to attract or like get members of the opposite sex oh like yeah that, obviously i, I do because i really just like i like my hair like yeah, i yeah. genuinely enjoy it yeah not only as like a part of my identity but like i and i like it mm. and i'm okay with it acknowledging that so for me you know, it's just one of those things where I probably would do that. And so, like, fundamentally, like, and I don't feel like there's something wrong with that. And mm. so, like, for me, like, cosmetic surgery is totally cool. Dude, I if, might have to get braces. Okay. I'm fucking 41 years old. That's all right. I, uh, I just went to the dentist for the first time since before pandemic. And they're, like, they're really concerned about my bite. And they're, like, the the, the lady was, like, have, has no one ever talked to you about fucking braces before? And I'm, like, no, what the fuck? I'm 41. Please. She's, like, like your teeth are fine, but, like, your bite's fucked up. Like, you, we got we might have to take out your wisdom teeth and, like, put on Invisalign for a while. I'm, like, all right, well, it all just sounds expensive and hurt. <laughs> Dentistry and, uh, is fucking. Yeah. I cracked a tooth, like, three months ago, and it freaked me out. I was eating, like, a turkey sandwich. It wasn't even, like, anything yeah. hard. And I was, like, oh, <laughs> fuck. I crunched it. I'm, like, oh, my God. It's my tooth. And I freaked out. I was, like, depressed for, like, three days. My, my tooth. And I went to the dentist. I was, like, they're going to tell me I need a root canal. They're, like, yeah, it's just a cavity. Or just fill it. Uh, oh, cool. I still don't want to do that. I just – dentistry is, like, archaic. Like, they oh, really haven't updated it in, like, 100-plus years. They'll just stick a needle in your gums. Yeah. Like, are you fucking and kidding me? And a lot of things they call cavities – are like pre cavities, like they haven't yeah. become, and they'll be like, we have to fill those, and like they don't. No, it's uh, well, obviously, you, you know, the profit motive spoils everything because you can't trust these motherfuckers. What happens to your bite if you don't fix it? It just keeps getting worse. But it's weird. Like what? I used to be able to like bite something with my front two teeth. Like, I can't even touch those teeth anymore. It's uh... weird. It's something. It's something going on with my jaw. And she felt my jaw. And she was like, it kind of goes in a Z shape, like when you open it, like subtly. Huh. So I don't know. It's a jaw thing. What about the imagination prescription? Because I feel like you came into our apartment not too long ago, and you're like, guys, my hair's growing back. And it did from yeah, where it was. <laughs> it was looking good. And it it really is like it's pretty long. The thing is, is that uh, I. I allow for all possibilities on that. I, when I really started believing that that was true is when I was like, it doesn't matter how it happens. I don't necessarily need to be the hand that goes in. And in fact, I haven't been doing it mm-hmm. to like 
let other things happen. Also, it's possible that like I just get used to where my hairline is now compared to where it used to be. And I'm like, all right, this is cool. And like, that's just my hair forever, which is totally possible. But I don't know. I would argue that your imagination technique worked because this was before you even met Denise and you took on a Turkish bride of all things. Yeah. And that's (laughs) where people go to get these certain, like, I feel like you And it wasn't on purpose. Yeah, exactly. You were like, oh. That was my plan all along. (laughs) (laughs) That was my only plan. It was like, I just need new hair. You know you'll (laughs) have the hair. Quickest route. Yeah, exactly. Yo, as a woman though, I'm like, my hair looks thinner than it has. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, it feels like even more tragic when you're, like it is harder it would be harder for women, women. is tough, i think that would be but tough. also you know what i stopped doing and i really think it's been good for my hair is i stopped shampooing it yeah. ever that's a good secret it's been like four months and i went to like the aegean sea like was in the sea like i'd rinse it and stuff but like uh i think that's i think the shit that we put in our hair is not Definitely. good M- even if it's like kind of good it's still not good yeah and your hair doesn't actually need it it like goes through this phase where why like, would it yeah, it's weird. Why would it need to be it's washed like that frequently? like soap is a thing yeah. in the environment, exactly. really, that people would make or anything. No, no. It's, I mean, it's all, uh, I, I don't know, it's just how you want to cope going through, you know? Like, it, it's uh, like as it's weird, as not obsessed I am about my hair, because I'm just like, whatever, that's an inevitability. I have the same hair as my dad. It's fine. It'll yeah, be cute. Yeah, yeah. The, the girls love me anyway. I don't know why, but <laughs> yeah. they do. But then I'm, like, obsessed with, like, keeping my current physique going. <laughs> like, obsessed, I mean, I, 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 I oscillate, like, 20-pound variances mm. from, like, a, a middle weight. And so, like, I just live – I've just come to, like, enjoy each phase of that life. Like, yes. I think, like, for me, there's, like, a certain point where I'm, like, okay, can't get – fatter than this like this is the absolute threshold like i actually have to start like changing the way i live my life but i also have been enjoying kind of playing again with like the imaginal stuff related to like health because the last time i did it i mean i was just like possessed like i was Mm -hmm. just exercising every day just because like i wanted to like out of like sheer wanting to do it um so i don't know it's like a game for me but i mean like you can't you can't develop like really shitty habits for years and years and years that becomes, then it's like the older you are also, it's just like hard to switch up those patterns. Like you have to have some, some degree of like, all right, this is my limit for how I want to feel. And again, like for me, it's, it's really just about how I feel. Like I know if I feel good in a certain regard, aesthetically or just like in my body Mm. and that i think everyone has some degree of that it's not a bad thing like it's it's, yeah it's it's a good thing to cultivate i was just listening to uh a navajo elder speak about like their values and how to walk uh the beauty way they call it like the path of beauty in life and he said the foundation of that is confidence and then you can start getting joy but if you don't have confidence it's hard to achieve joy and it's hard to walk the beauty way that's true very very simple and he didn't even i mean he started to get into how you can get confidence but uh, you know in this modern life uh, it's tough it's a fucking battle because i feel like the self-doubt is like its own mycelial network and you'll just like invite a spore of it in and it's it, for me at least it spreads to every aspect of my life and that's what happened to me for a while yeah but then i kind of just caught it i think at a certain point and was like all right i have to choose like what thoughts i identify with about myself like i have mm. to choose like i'm getting pitched so many ideas by my mind right now <laughs> of what type of person i am i have to a pick one yeah and b if i pick it like kind of justify it mm-hmm. and like or like at least want to choose that version yeah and i think that's been really important because if you, that gets out of control you like give up kind of the ability to even recognize what you want to be identifying with and then mm. then it gets pretty gnarly mm. then you yeah. can get stuck in sticky states uh but that's kind of what i've been doing lately and i, I i'm always amazed that it does work like it genuinely works because you're just chilling out basically that's all it is at the end of the day yeah you're just yeah. chilling out it's not like it's some grand skill although i feel like i can feel 
the switch the like emotional like levels now like and be like okay that's that's good that mm-hmm. feels like that's gonna be like something that worked and i can let it go and not have to like think about it anymore which i don't think i had like full mastery or like control of like I don't know, two years ago three mm-hmm. years ago mm-hmm. Yeah, you fucking you've been off the scene for a little bit, man. I went away for like a year. Well, I started doing less and less of them. But I mean, I explained it too. I was basically like the second any of this stuff feels like a job or oh, like yeah, dude. like or like I'm not or I'm just saying stuff for the sake of saying stuff. I'm like I can't. I can't do that. Like well, yeah. there's no I, it's mm-hmm. not like even though I was getting paid like crazy amounts of money, like I just, it wouldn't be possible to do that. And it was, especially if, like if I'm just talking for like 30 minutes to an hour straight, I can't bullshit for that long. Like that's a long ass time. So basically I was burnt out. I was overwhelmed in my personal life. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to like pause this, would pop back in every few months and be like, this is, I'm not. I'm not dead. Yeah. I'm still here. My imagination's actually working wonderfully. <laughs> yeah. Right. The, and I was like the, the the crypto stuff was also insane. And my absence was very much correlated to that time period of like a pretty epic bull run that was like, you know, year and a half, two years. Mm. Uh so I was doing that stuff, which anyone who does it you know, and really gets into it. It just takes over. It's Mm. because it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of the biggest power ups in society is like money and wealth. And there's all of a sudden like a cheat code for getting it. It's bizarre. Yeah. And it works way dumber than it should for like, (laughs) it's so (laughs) stupid, but it does work. And, uh, I look forward to the next one, which will probably be even stupider. Mm. And he's the key is just to be as dumb as possible. Yeah. To keep doing it and know like a few smart people mm-hmm. who you can talk to. That's it. And then that money comes in, it's like fucking confidence doubloons. That's what that's what <laughs> in modern society, that's what like at the it's hard to be a confident person and uh struggling financially. It's a it's a fucking tough thing. So Yeah, you can, you you can still do it though. I mean when I think back how in debt i was like two and a half three years ago Mm -hmm. when i was getting separated and the amount of confidence i had that was like i was like how you were on fire i was like what is going on like how because you you do it at the at the times you need to do it like you're when your choices are like collapse as a human being or like rise up to the level you need to be at to do the things you really want to do i feel like you got to choose the latter always yeah. like it's the who's got time to collapse <laughs> most people i mean it's such a privilege to to be able to collapse and not end up in institutions you know unprivileged people can collapse but they usually end up institutionalized in some way shape or form yeah but, you know and people do it voluntarily too i've spoken to more than a few who like you know have done stints or are in mental <laughs> institutions by their own really? choice, like voluntarily, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but what do they think is gonna happen? There? I think people get freaked out because they realize, like, maybe their reality isn't lining up with the people's around them, and they can also maybe sense some like instability internally, and then mm. that can maybe think that like they're like that forever. There's something really wrong with them, and then someone else is gonna tell them what's wrong with them. Mm. But, and you know, I've spoken to people who probably should be overseen by someone for a little bit like they're just like kind of off their rocker and like i've at times been kind of off my rocker usually not for extended periods of time but like you know at those times we have a babysitter that's why you have someone around you (laughs) yeah it's all right you're good so i mean you know i try not to judge but people if that's what makes them feel safe and they feel like they need to go into like supervised care it's just that feels like the most unsafe environment to me that's the only thing to me it would be like that's like it's the last place i would ever want to be if i was freaking out they're they're gonna just hit you with something that's gonna make you fit in a little bit better you know and for some people sedate you yeah give you like xanax and yeah klonopin and all that stuff i think when you're having a breakdown it's really hard 
to be creative with like from the outside someone could be like you have so many options like what do you but like when you feel like you're going down you just cling to the most desperate option it seems like I mean I didn't go through this a lot but there was one time that I thought 10 years there was one time I thought genuinely we might be breaking up my first instinct was to look at like the shittiest motel back in our hometown (laughs) that like you wouldn't even want to go into but like why did my mind go there like my mind went just like all right I just gotta like go to the straight to the bottom yeah it's it's what you think you deserve in that in those moments Yeah, yeah something like that are you a cancer moon yeah. 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 <laughs> some cancer moon shit. Some like <laughs> real low, torturous level emotional home feelings. I got to go to a shitty motel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It definitely, I don't know. You just kind of lose all semblance of like having your shit together when you go into those states. But I don't know. There's value in it too. Like, I'm, <coughs> it does paint like a stark relief to like the good shit and when you're in flow states yeah and i think we tend to forget that that if you were always in a flow state you wouldn't even know and you would begin soon begin to like not appreciate it it's like when you move or go to like an airbnb or you go to some like really nice place right it's novel it's new it's amazing you can see it with these fresh eyes if you hang out there for like a really long period of time you're gonna like uh that and this, this thing. thing and like maybe once in a while you'd be like wow sunset so cool but yeah. like you yeah, know you need the contrast for appreciation and sometimes you might be in a couple of years of the dark contrast but yeah you, like you if you're like over the age of like 25 you're like ah, uh, well this is temporary you know what i mean there's a certain point where you have enough of life experience that you know like whatever state that you're in is like an impermanent state you couldn't even stay there if you wanted to yeah it's true and, like, it's usually there to teach you something, and it's some type of imbalance. Like, right? Mm. It's, like, presenting you something that you know isn't how you are desiring to feel or, like, want to feel. But sometimes they, there's usually a function yeah. to it. But, yeah, I was just overwhelmed, and I was burnt out, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to keep doing a podcast. Yes. I was just like, I was like, how? I was, like, barely coping. Was well, like, too many kids too quickly yeah you have you have all these <laughs> You're kids crazy. you know it feels uh, amazing now because i feel like i found my footing but yeah mm. i mean it was oh like, my god when your kids are like 18 between the ages of 18 and 25 or whatever they're gonna be at some point that'll be really fun yeah, i'm not saying know. it's not fun all the no, way up, no no you know what i mean i try not to have to think that far in the future i'll be yeah. old as fuck how old will i be I'll be f- like four f- when they're all that age. I mean, Austin's only one. You'll be 60. Be so old. <laughs> yeah, I am. You'll be fine, though. It, I it's know. good. It, it's it, like. You uh, might be bald, but. No way. No, I'll no. Hair. <laughs> one way or the other. This guy? No, I'm, no, I'm imagining hair. you with a full head of hair for sure. And like, I don't even care if it, like, gray hairs. Like, people are upset about gray. I'm like, I don't give a shit about gray hair. Like, no. it could be the weirdest color ever. If it's hair and yeah. it's on my head, yeah. I'm cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> like human hair, preferably, <laughs> and my own, I hope. But like horse hair. Yeah. Oh I remember like seeing there was one time this dude at like it was like a cashier at like giant grocery at, where I grew up, a grocery store, and like he clearly had gotten transplants, but it was like the worst thing I had ever seen. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, dude, it's not worth it. It looked like like the you know, the scratch and sniff yeah stuff but it was all like scarred up and i was like fuck that yeah it's fucked up i've seen that that was 30 years ago probably you could always do like a a wig the toupee if you know what i don't think i could do that is it would get too itchy yeah yeah it's, i can't it's, pretend i'm not itchy on my head my whole life right. i'll go insane <laughs> i'll literally be a psychopath <laughs> like who could do that it definitely gets itchy. There's no like anti-itch thing for that. Oh yeah, no, it's a fucking that that's that's antiquated technology. There's no there's no ways to to get hair if you want it. It looks real though. I've seen the wigs they do where they like shave the heads and they put the wig on and it yeah. looks really good, but I mean that's Also the shock of taking that off would freak me out every time. I think it's like, pretty sexy when you just like I think if if it's between bad hair plugs and no hair, I think choosing no hair is the better option. Yeah. It's like Obviously, something good yeah. or not or bad. I mean, bad is never going to be a preferable uh, yeah, option. Yeah, 
It, uh, pe- the people that went and got bad hair plugs did not think that's <laughs> yeah, what they were getting. Totally. They really thought they were going to look like fucking John Stamos on the other side. That's what you got to do. You got to go to Turkey. That's the thing. Go to yeah. a reputable place in Turkey. Yeah, exactly. Where Wherever John Stamos goes. Tom Brady, Tom Elon Brady. Musk, yep. all these people. Elon yep. Musk isn't even that good. But he was like really bald. Like, yeah. It was so like he just did it. Yeah. It's cool. Bezos went the other way. He just said, I'll just be fucking Dr. Evil looking motherfucker. He really looks like Dr. Evil. It's crazy. <laughs> like, brolic, like Jack Dr. Evil. So I saw someone point out, they were like, oh, I wrote this thing where the, it was like the major corporation, their lo- that was like a evil corporation, their logo was like a smirk. And then someone pointed out that the Amazon logo kind of looked like a yeah, smirk. Yeah, it is, a little smile. But it's like a smirk. It kind of is like not like a. It's, kinda, like, yeah. it's condescending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Amazon, by the way. And I heard people <laughs> talking at Eli's soccer game. They and like this is like you know, regular people, right? Their kids are in soccer, and probably aren't like me, being like, "This is weird." The whole time, <laughs> like, what a weird yeah, experience. Yeah. It's normalized for them. They were like, uh, "Yeah, I just ordered the clothes, and if it doesn't fit." UPS just comes and pick it up. It's like way better than having to go to the store and return this shit. And I'm like, damn, like once people catch on to the clothes stuff, which is, Oh, it's happening. I've There's already whole, done it and yeah. I'm not proud of it. Yeah. But, but it's so much better than the process of going. I hate shopping. Me, I hate it more yeah. than anyone. Yeah. I don't even like doing the Amazon cause just the act of having to try on and put it back in the box. I don't like oh to my do. Gosh. Amazon though is like the crapification of everything. Like everything is now crap. You know what but I mean? You can get good stuff on Amazon. They can s- you? Yeah, of course. I bought amazing pieces of third party stuff that are sold by some store. Mm. on prime or otherwise like that speaker is the best speaker i've ever owned the ob4 in there that the teenage engineering they're just an amazing company they sell it on amazon do you ever go into a store though and you're like thank god this place exists it has handcrafted stuff local artists like (laughs) i don't know i think there's something like i really don't don't think there's anything wrong with that I, i mean i think now we're at this place where People are upset that Amazon could take over Barnes and Noble. I'm like, I remember the day that yeah. the you've got mail days, like where Barnes and Noble was, was bad. like was the, the bad was the thing, evil and one. I still think it is. I still yeah. like, I don't. I'm not like, oh, I'm so sad for CVS or whatever it is. Like, I don't. I mean, I care because that's people's livelihoods and people work there, and you want to be able to get what you need. But we really need to bring back like At the least... local bakers and shit like that. Mm. See, up here it's kind of nice though, because like I go to the market for like the apples and the bread and like there's the place down the street and they like you get enough of that like flavor where you're like yeah. you are supporting local businesses whether yeah. they succeed or not is you know up for debate at times but like amazon like i don't know i just like that shit is really convenient and it oh, really yeah. like will only get more convenient like they have ai and drones and you know. I fucking yeah, it's it's one of those hate love things. These motherfuckers. Yeah, but you okay. use it as the ultimate. I try not yeah, to. You but try yeah, you try. I try not to, but I of course still ha- find myself feeling like I have to at times, which is do you have a ridiculous. Prime membership? No, mm-hmm. but no, I don't. I don't have anything. I Cast do. the handles everything. I have literally. I feel like every. <laughs> You're a subscription possible, man. Every subscription possible. It's every day I feel like I'm unsubscribed. I'm like, why am I? Why did I? To <laughs> I have this? to. Rem- I have to put things in my calendar. Like, you bought Hulu because you couldn't get into this account, and then you want it, and you have to remember to unsubscribe. To Fucking, you know what? I'm subscribed to that. I need to unsubscribe to Mailchimp. Like, oh my god, they're they charging me like so seventy five dollars a month. It's now. insane. Fuckers. I went to cancel it three months ago, and they're like, "We'll give you three months for free." And I was like, "You know what? Today. I'll take it." And then yesterday, I got a seventy dollars charge, and I'm like, "Oh, I forgot to tr- cancel this fucking thing." Fucking yeah, Discord and then, matters, and then when you. you try to cancel it, it says, "Uh, you're allowed to two more times of uh pausing your account, and then your account will be deleted." And I'm like, "Oh, so the twenty five hundred, five thousand, whatever people we have who are on our mailing list, we just, I mean, I guess we could download that, but it's yeah, just like fucking it. bullshit. I fucking hate that's Mailchimp. what I'm gonna do. They should have something for people who like want to send. You should have a thing where it's like, I want to pay to send out this email. Like, I'll pay seventy dollars to send out one email, but not per month. But not per month. 
Yeah, we don't want to send that many. They do have that. They have those credits, no? Or did they change their whole model? Fuck them. I also am dealing with the same thing. And fuck Amazon. Can we just say that? Yeah, but I use them. I can only say it so much without being Well, because you kind of have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, no one has to. But your other option is like Walmart. Like, it's just as bad. It's yeah. just a fucking brick and mortar version. And you I gotta like drive it, there. It's yeah. very convenient for, like, productions, you know? Like, it's like, oh shit, we have a shoot on Friday and I need, like, yeah. a million things and I don't, yeah. you know. Cass uses it for that reason. It's Why not, wouldn't you? It gets yeah. to your door in two days. I think what we want is, like, okay, Amazon is not going away. Amazon is a thing, but how can we make it so it's not. It's it's definitely it's like the coffee of companies like everybody's already it's fully integrated everybody's reliant on it and addicted to it and, and loves it and it brings a lot of people joy it's just like but can we pay people a living wage who well they're, there? they're they're actually figuring that out you know there's not a lot of news about it but they are they're starting to unionize and figure all this shit out but they'll get replaced by robots so it's, yeah it's the not robots gonna, will do you know it's right? not gonna matter yeah the robots will do it soon yeah and then they'll just pay everyone in a s- centralized digital bank currency and yeah. everyone will just you know everyone's gonna have an amazon mailbox where it's like the robot can just like put that's it in basically called your front door yeah <laughs> that's what the amazon mailbox but i'm saying is. a robot can't necessarily come up to everyone's front door it could just a drone can a drone yeah so it'll will. be like oh they'll have like drones and it'll like a, a truck will land on a street and then the drones will go like yeah zoop, yeah zoop, boop. No, it'll I be a blimp they, they'll have centers they probably send them from they're probably like high they've done this with blimps they where that where a blimp is just hanging out over a city and then thousands of drones just start going dropping off fucking bullshit to people i need that bullshit yeah no i i guess i, gotta, you I love stuff s- yeah I, gotta, I, I love stuff too i'm, I'm I definitely bought a materialist bread basket <laughs> that's a nice i mean every man needs one of those you never know, that's in a, my <laughs> life if you would have asked me what is the last thing you will buy and like what would you definitely i would definitely have bread basket was on multiple choice i would have chose it no i mean uh, uh, it feels appropriate i mean uh, when you slice the bread in the morning if you toast the bread and bring it out it's nice to have the bread basket yeah. for people to take the don't get me wanting things <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have a bread basket it's like we don't have an apartment right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but bread basket is yeah i need to stop accumulating shit yeah it's definitely the direction my life needs to go I don't know. Like, we can't stop buying stuff from like, uh, like hippie pop ups. Etsy. Know? Yeah. Or like, yeah. Is it cool stuff? Yeah. Oh, wait, look, look at I these got these pants. pants. How cool are these pants? Oh, half I didn't red, even half black. They were. And yeah. she wants to half. get boots that one's red, one's black, and you know. It's cool. for my Halloween. It's like a costume. Harley Quinn. Yeah, no. Type of deal. Totally. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I like uh, stuff. I like stuff. It's okay. It's probably in your astrological makeup, and it's probably in mine, maybe too. It, maybe it is. I just know that I like it because it's... Uh, well, it's Taurus here. is that definitely that type of shit, like material. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I just like stuff. But I like good stuff. I like the things I like the most are where I feel like I... It's not even how much they cost. It's just how good it is. Yeah, all your musical equipment. And, like, relative to other stuff that's out there like that that always feels like good purchases my new favorite purchase that i want to buy everyone if i could afford it for everyone is that jbl light up speaker that like glows and i know it yeah oh my god because you can pair them and create surround sound so now mayor has one and sean has one i'm like we gotta do surround sound and then i need one so we'll do like this three pod fucking light musical show. light and i'm like i need some sort of sticker to put on you it need that like makes a it full like... light rig you just yeah. gotta get one of those things you see at the clubs where they're like they did i always thought that was so cool people who figured that out at like a club how to do the lights oh yeah you, who has the passion for people that? do cool. it like we've been making this movie Wooks, and like so we're going all these hippie things and like people fucking set up campsites like you're, you're at oh, a club oh yeah start camping and then you'll be like oh, I need a lot of things from Amazon yeah, oh yeah fucking Jesus Christ we're bare bones like we could barely find our campsite because it's just there's no lights or anything but people holy shit and the sound systems people drag out there yeah they it's ridiculous extremely. when are we gonna throw a party we can throw a party whenever. We should yeah. throw a party. Yeah, together. we might we might have to. We also have the event space in Brooklyn. We should throw like, a sleepover. We really can do that. It's a real thing. Yeah. Let's do I it. I know that for a fact. We want to have a psychedelic freak end. Yeah, like a twenty four hour. Is this like an orgy? 
no. <laughs> it sounds like an orgy. No, no sex. Se- well, I don't care if people have sex, but I don't want to see it. Not with you. I and heard me. rumors, wink, wink, unbeknownst that, uh, to my lovely wife, there were sex parties going on. Oh, my God. That place is a there. perfect place for a sex party. Ooh, and like she found whoa. out in a roundabout way. Did she When she found out, was she like, no more? Or was she like... Yeah, of course no more. Like, I mean, like, you know, like, do what you want to do. But like, no. Yeah. Like, it's not what you want. We're in the age of monkeypox, Cass. Yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago, <laughs> but like, they're all around the city. Like, there's those nights. I've like, never been to one or desired seeing what it's like or no. going to one or participating no. in one. Some people can really like let them. I'm not like that at all. I would be interested to Wait. see the astrological makeup of the people that go to those things because it's definitely we we know a lot of people that attend those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Certain kind of personality that shit is. Bugged out to me. Good for them, though. What Good a, for them. What a free way to be. Yeah. In no. life. No, yeah. I mean, no. It, I mean, it, it. It is. It is cool. I, like I don't know. It's. I like, it's very never... generous to share your sex like that. Like it's very generous to please someone and receive pleasure and not be so restricted about who can yeah. get into your yeah. flesh bubble. Yeah. Um, I can never do it. <laughs> I know that. No. It's People are everybody. into it though. People really like it, and God bless them. Yeah. That's what you want to be doing out in the world. You get cocked in public. <laughs> Is that that's what we're the talking thing. about here? But see, that's the thing, like to like I just don't understand that part of it. Yeah. Like some of them are singles events. So like people just go single and yeah, it's not yeah. like that. That I Were could, you ever like a one night stand guy? I had a couple of one night stands and I I don't want to say I regret them both. But like, it's not like my best sexual experiences. No, they're usually some of the worst. It's not the not the best. Because you're, you're not in love with the person, you know. You're... I've never been. I have had one. I think it counts as one. I had met him a night before, so it wasn't like meet you that night, get drunk, and just choose someone. I was like, he had been pre-chosen in my mind, but and I'd already been to his apartment, whatever. Blah blah blah. You scouted the scene. I scouted the scene, but I woke up in his bed, and it was like one of those beds that like kind of went in like that, and I was like. I got to get the fuck out of here. Like 5.45 a.m. I'm like yeah. running around looking for my socks. I'm calling my friend like, I get, get me the fuck out of here. I'm so hungover and I do not even know this person. And well, I, that's the other thing. A I lot of one night stands are uh, you're waking up to the worst hangover because to even get to the place where you could night, do that. I left that night. I left right after. Literally oh. right after. Like, w- which has its own karmic repercussions in your soul. You it's know? not good. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was not. I was just like, I'm out. Yeah. So let's pretend like this never happened. It was someone yeah. in like the social group, a friend of a friend. I mean, no. Yeah. Can't hang out with these people ever again. <laughs> that shit was. I was just like so drunk and horny. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm fucking tonight. Like that's yeah. just what's happening, and this is available. And I was just like, that was not the right choice. Yeah. That's yeah. how mine have happened. Or you have to tell your friends, hey. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. What are you talking about? I think I probably denied it yeah. to at least like. And like oh, no I just walked to... her home. What are you talking about? No. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I dropped her off. Like, yeah. What are you talking about? But yeah. fuck. Yeah. I One night stands are not typically. I don't know. Some people just really like the physical act or all acts of like sex. Like enough where that is what they want to get out of it so i mean yeah. i guess from that level if that's where you're at like what is it called i called you demisexual or something like where you f- want to fall in love before you are intimate with someone like, yeah yeah. Like, yeah there's like that sort of thing that's but cool too i've had like on acid been like wow like am i fucked up that like do i really like i love everyone but do i really if i won't share my sex with them yeah, that's like, an acid uh, thought for sure. That's like the <laughs> most acid thought of all time. I'm like, I, I thought know I was... that realm where you're just like in this place <laughs> asking those oh, type man. of questions. I like, mean, I thought I was pure and I thought I loved people, but do I really? Yeah, but that's also like the type of question that like you probably figure out pretty quickly the answer to it, <laughs> unless you just start going fucking everyone, yeah. just because like. There, like boundaries, even in like boundaryless states, like there still needs to be some order to the like chaos, and that can look like anything and be anything for anyone. But like you know what's comfortable for you, mm. like that's like I don't know. I guess it gets weird now with like the gender as a spectrum thing. But like 
I am in no way averse to like homosexual like thoughts or people being homosexuals, but like I know in my soul just what I am attracted to. Have you never had a homosexual experience? No. You're not gay, bro. Not even when you were like a kid? Like No, a, not even when I was a, a kid. A mutual jerk off sort of no. thing. No. And I think like I don't want to say it's weird if people had. It's just like that was like the the gayest stuff that happened when I was growing up was at like sleepaway camps. Like some of the kids would like take out their dicks, you know, because they're like 13, 14 year old kids and they're just like comparing dicks and like. You know, I remember specifically this one time, this like French kid, Pierre, it was like a micro penis and everyone went ballistic because I guess he didn't know because he hadn't like compared to anyone. And we were all like, what is going on? It was like a, it was like a a two year old's penis. It was insane. He had a micro penis and he was showing it off. Yeah. Well, imagine learning that you have a micro penis like that. So traumatic. Very Holy traumatic. Shit, but you man. gotta know, man. Yeah. You gotta figure it out by then that you can't pull mm. up your little dick. Yeah. That was that's the age when the gayest shit is going down, you know. Yeah, um, it's like puberty, everyone's like overly sexed up, but yeah, no, I I didn't have any gay I got hit on when I was going to clubs alone when I was young and like super like thin and in shape. I definitely got hit on by some creepo dudes. Yeah. Those, I mean, but like, like yeah. older dudes. Yeah, I mean, older than me. I was like fucking sixteen to eighteen. Yeah, but like, he's a beautiful twink. Yeah, I yeah. unfortunately, and so like, <laughs> but those are like the only gay experiences, and like, I was just enough where I was like, I fuck this. Like, I don't, want this. I don't need this in my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, more power to you if you're feel like you want to sample all aspects of the buffet. I mean, there's nothing wrong mm. with that. Definitely not. But it's cool. <laughs> that's what you're into I don't want to even be a thing anymore to be cis or straight right like that's just gonna go away as a thing yeah yeah it already kind of is we're spectrum people yeah yeah man that's all good yeah it's, it was it's cool <laughs> we're just fucking doing a really strange dance down here as monkeys it's pretty weird but then you start getting those acid questions like, should I should just be sharing my sex with everyone? Am I gay? Am I gay? Am I gay is a valid, yeah, useful question, I think, for people to ask themselves on totally. a regular basis. Especially just to be on clear, acid. Yeah. To hold, well, on psychedelics, will <laughs> really Well, you'd hate to be up. someone who gets to the age of 50 and like, oh, my God, this whole time I've been suppressing the yeah. fact that I love dick. That's the thing, mm. too. And even though it was like pretty much culturally accepted, but I had made it unacceptable in my heart, you know? Mm. That's the thing, too. Like, having done enough psychedelic trips and you know ketamine and all of these things like you if you if you can't figure out your if you're a gay or have homosexual tendencies on those rides like uh, uh. so oh, i feel like yeah. i'm pretty confident of my tendencies if anything, they're yeah. like too skewed in that direction it's not like necessarily even like a great thing it's just like that is like yeah I, it's so funny like because we just this all started because we were talking about throwing a party together i feel like yeah. it's like really high in my priority list that people know that if i'm throwing a party it's not a sex party <laughs> like why um, do people think that saying. but i'm like you need to not you need to know this because like if you're kind of new to acid like there's oh, a point in the trip where you yeah. start thinking that people are well, trying that's why to I fuck said you sleepover because people that's like easily that's misconstrued true. yeah oh i was just thinking sleepover because like who can afford to live in new york city anyway? yeah <laughs> yeah like, like, <laughs> like totally we got you for a night yeah <laughs> But yeah. like, uh, no, the I think that there's something that happens at a certain point in an acid trip where I, I remember walking around on at uh, space camp and just thinking that people were like under blankets jerking each other off. And I'm like, what has happened? Like, which might have been true. Which might How have been true. How much drugs were you on? I, Everybody uh, took like a couple of hits. Like a tab and a half. You of never acid. know if that it's wavy possible. motion is yeah. people actually turning each other off. But I'm just, saying whether or not yeah. that was happening, I was assuming that's happening. Yeah. I'm like a experienced <laughs> traveler, so like who knows what someone else could think. So it's like you have to set the parameters from the beginning. Like 
no one is to touch other people without consent you're not expected right. to have sex this isn't a sex party like if your energy goes there that's your own energy not yeah. like you're not being like pull- i'm not trying to seduce you into sex because acid can be very seductive like the way you intimately can look into someone's eyes and see yeah. their soul you can quickly think oh they want something from me or they want my whatever mm. or need my meh. we're we're new to this drug uh we just took it for the second time 2cb Dude. how do you like it everyone we has pitched we, me on 2cb for almost so long. Oh my like God. what Cass is saying, we won't take this drug so s- outside of our sex circle, which yeah. is me, Cass, and Mare right now. <laughs> like that's just because it's, it's too it's intimate. Just, it's very yeah. well. It's What's very it? I know arousing. People love it. What's the deal? It feels like okay, so it's kind of like an acid come up, but not as heady. Where you're just like a little shaky and like. But we've had so many acid come ups that you're kind of like bracing yourself because yeah. you're not sure where it's gonna go. But, but it's then smooth. It, then this, it's like pretty chill. But then you get to a point where you like are just in orgasm like without doing anything it's just like yeah very Nothing full body that. you snort it no mm, I think it, you can i don't know maybe what do you, you can. do such a small take it like a take a little teeny teeny bit it's like a rock little bit. We, yeah we it's a, like a powder we put it in a pill then open the pill and then oh, i got gotcha. like that yeah it cool. starts hitting pretty quick and about an hour and a half after you took it you're just sexual and uh no no other drugs really been like that for me like i like taking acid in groups i like taking molly in groups like i don't even think of molly as a sexual drug though acid and molly together yeah. can get like that yes. but um 2cb is almost that it feels like a light candy flip um psychedelic visuals once you start smoking weed and just like adonis sex like porn star level like tantric connection crazy seems like what that drug's for so but you're like swimming in orgasm it feels like it's you know? insane <laughs> it's, yeah, it's i'm insane. sold so yeah the two cd's <laughs> great two cd's well, great well, we should have brought some yeah, yeah. and, and well. there's no like I, I think really backlash like you know like how molly little... like can be like oh i flew too close to the sun i'm gonna have to go regrow my wings it's popular i know that two cb been around for a while people had these pills or pressed something uh, over there yeah and uh people were enjoying them quite oh yeah yeah it's It's um, like psychedelic but like also like you're present it's 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 about context though because like if you kind of if you have a partner and you feel like comfortable that sexual like you don't really want to be around of a lot of people you want to have the safe space where you can do your intimate dance or whatever yeah totally. and, uh, the the guy that invented it was uh alex shulgin who is yeah. you know who discovered mdma or rediscovered mdma he didn't invent it but he did invent 2cb and he this was his favorite of all of the and like he created wife's, 200 his wife's too because she always like her thing when she would like try these drugs is like well how is sex on this drug was like a big priority for her yeah she wrote books about it that's smart. That's a really important thing. I did have a thought while I was on it, though, that I was like, fuck, it's true what they say. They try to scare you as kids like, oh, sex will never feel as good as it does on this drug. And it's like, OK, yeah, maybe that is true, but sex still feels good. Not on the drug. It's just no, it sets a new high watermark for like, you know, you can get there. You, you, you're like, oh, whoa, this is possible. Cool. We don't necessarily need this drug to do this, obviously. You know? Yeah. Sex also like good sex like it, the baseline is high enough it's like you know yeah. it's not like you're yeah, like yeah exactly it's, like it's the best every single time but if yeah. it's good it's like all right yeah we're, we're in good shape here we're, yeah it's not yeah, like exactly. a bad time for yeah <laughs> so how unsatisfying compared to the other one it's not how you think it it's like a good pleasant totally. surpassing yeah it's it's a it's a really incredible experience interesting that, uh, we'll 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 pass along we'll share with you yeah 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 i still have mdma that from i haven't done i've done very few drugs over the past i haven't done ketamine in like well over a year yeah well over we fell year. off with it too Probably like six months ago not really or sure when and why because i stopped liking it personally Cass I, always has that more defining the, um drawn a line in the yeah, sand it got moment. weird for you i was yeah. like i don't enjoy this anymore why would i keep trying something that i keep not enjoying yeah i just couldn't get back to the k-hole I think that's what ultimately, like, why am I snorting something if I can't get the benefits of it? It's not worth anything in the world. No, no, <laughs> dude. But it's really not worth it if you're just snorting air. Just you're snorting up money. Your nose. You're snorting yeah, money. money too, I think yeah. that I think there's a lesson there for especially us three because we kind of s- 
discovered that stuff together and started that journey and did that journey it seems like fully now uh you know that get while the getting's good with anything in life because because drugs especially there's a time when they work for you and then they stop working for you it does seem like that. Get while the getting's good. <laughs> that's well. That's us as no kids, with few responsibilities. To, yeah, like we can fully indulge and have yeah. set ourselves up to fully indulge in that yeah. way. So you think? We fully did the dance you with ketamine. Know. I, think. I I don't know. So like I I haven't done it in a while. I'll probably do it again at some point. Yeah, same here. But yeah, those last DMT ketamine experiences for me were enough to shake the very core of my being where like i'm like all right well, i've done acid since then like yeah yeah but like uh, i'm like good for a little bit on the dissociating from reality yeah yeah i'm just glad it wasn't like an eternal like you know you hear the dmt stories or like the ketamine stories where like they're living like lives and lives and years and I mean, years I, it seems like kind of you had a microdose of that yeah but experience. that's what i mean but like, like i was whoa. able to get out of it like, yeah and i went to the the scariest part for me well there's many scary parts but the part where i was like <laughs> when i would breathe in all of reality would disappear and then when i would breathe out it would all come back and make this like wow. sound like that part was like it felt like a while but it was probably only like a few seconds Damn. but that part was freaking me out that was good. some you were a twisted godhead was, God. you, you were fucking taking it all of I creation in and then fucking recreating yeah, the universe i was like i don't need this <laughs> it's like this Holy is too much shit. i was like am i i'm stuck here it took me so long to come back to. Even when I was back in the room, it took me like 10 minutes to even like begin to feel somewhat close to normal. You're the worst case I've ever seen of someone being like totally puddled into like reverted to like an infant. And then Not the toddler. worst I've seen. Pest just hasn't been there for one of the times I did that to somebody. <laughs> I was so done. But, I mean, dude, we came back two weeks later, and we did podcasts about all this stuff. We came back two weeks later, and you were still very shaky. Yeah. Shaking like, like you had month. seen a ghost that day. You know? Yeah, because it was <laughs> insane. It yeah. was, like, way too much for wow. my feeble brain to possibly. And I went in with such, a like, a hubris. Like, it was just, like, bound to happen. But... I was like, should we turn off the music? You're like, no, no, no. I'm cool. Nah, I know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm no, but I know. Holy I'm like, I know about DMT, fuck. and you kind of don't want to be tied to anything. You want to be able to fully go there, and then I don't even remember anything about music. I don't remember yeah, listening. He was beyond that. Yeah, I remember I at some point being like, I think there was a filter on something, but I couldn't. I was just fucking gone. Yeah, like, man. Just blasted. Well, welcome back. I'm glad you made it back. Well, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time we we served you, it was uh, Changa. It was great. That, it's a whole different experience. Amazing. It's, it's kind of like weed of D, the DMT world. Like it's like you can puff on it a little bit, and, and you a nice slow introduction. And when we came up that time, not only were you probably like edging on a K hole. But this is the fucking crystal I did DMT. I googled it beforehand. I was like, okay, ketamine and DMT. And someone was like, this was the most orgasmic, transcendent yeah, yeah. experience yeah, yeah. I've ever had. I'm like, all right, we're good You're to like, go. Serve them up. <laughs> and and you, you got epic because you smoke. So you got epic That's puffs. Problem. That's normally people's threshold to the whole realm. It was is too much. like it was they can't like... get the smoke and you got the smoke and as you're exhaling I'm like all right and you were you were good for like the first 2 minutes and then And then you tried to make out with Mare and Sean was Did like, I? Yeah. Dude, that was one of 25 <laughs> things. It was like <laughs> whoever I can guarantee I didn't know it was anyone. You thought she was Denise. You yeah, thought, you, 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 you asked me to move in with you because you <laughs> you were like, will you move in with me? And I'm like, I was so dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was no, you didn't know who it. we were. You you didn't know who you were, and you were having us reassure you. You know I who you were. So... You were like, do you love my kids? And Mare was like, you uh, love your kids. And we were like, that was the wrong answer because you got very upset when she didn't say, I love your kids. <laughs> I think that man, I you was know. so gone. It was too many drugs. That's that it. is really the That's truth it. of it. And like, because I know because I smoked Changa later that yeah. night, yeah. And the same shit happened. Yeah. So I was like, all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not the, any. This is like where I'm at. That, right that, now. I just went you, to hell. Let me try this again. Yeah. That that's that's how I know you were a brave psychonaut or somebody just in deep need of help. But uh, <laughs> you're like, let's both. let's spark up the Changa. I was like, I got you. And you're doing the chonga and you're like, wow. And, and you're like, did I shit in my pants? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, grab Mary. 
let's get yeah, out of here. Like, I don't this know. night is a wrap. I'm like, what? You didn't shit in your pants? I was like, No, the you? best part was he said, <laughs> did I poop my pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't shit. It was, did I poop my pants? And Sean's like looking. He's like, um. <laughs> I'm like, you're dry as a bone, dog. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Perfect. So I wanted to know. <laughs> oh, my, oh God. my God. I was gone. Yeah. It was just yeah. like too much. Whatever realm. <laughs> it was like some weird two-dimensional polygon pink something. I was like it was just too yeah much. It was yeah. just getting like shot through layers of reality that you didn't even know existed, yet you're experiencing. It was like, oh, man. That's too much. And, like, people are like, whoa, I see all these entities. And I'm like, how do you see shit? Like, I didn't – that was, like, fucking blurring past literally everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like – Well, you were already disassociated that's because the of the ketamine and then That's the, the DMT, which I is, like, a like, total like, brain breaker. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I guess there's a way to surf those realms, but uh, I think it was just, like, You would have had to been more prepared. I think you were more like, let's fucking do this. It was, like, more on a whim kind of energy than intentional. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, oh, we, well. we were just saying on the way up, we were listening to this Jeffrey Lewis song uh, called "The Last Time I Did Acid, I Went Insane." Yeah, and and w- during that song, actually, he he says, you know, he had the he said the thought came into my head, "Am I gay?" But then, <laughs> but then, uh, one one of the parts of the song, it just he goes, and then I start, he's like, nothingness, nothingness, nothingness. And me and Cass were debating if we ever have experienced nothingness. I know I have, and I'm, I debated yeah, that. I don't she, think she was like, has. have you ever experienced nothingness? So you're, and she's like, you're always in God mode or whatever when we do this stuff. And I'm just like, but isn't that what it is? I'm know. like, no, 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 no nothingness. The There's no God and nothingness. It's the opposite. It's void. Yeah. It's not yeah. that. Yeah. I've smoked not, toad and gone um, to the void. That I've heard, yeah. And then slowly thing. come back. It was very peaceful, though. Like, what Cass is describing is it's, terrifying. It's nothingness, There nothingness, is the opposite of that. Whatever you experience is usually what people would call nothingness. Yeah. It's a very constricted, it's very dark, lonely, lonely place. Yeah. It's your own. Mm. Yeah. I and mean, you feel stuck there. You're like a genie in the bottle. That's what I was Ooh. breathing in and out when I was coming back from DMT. Yeah, you're except right. Except I knew it was connected to my breath, and I'm like, oh my God, I have to breathe or I'll die. <sighs> it will not come back. And mm. I'm like, oh, this is death. And then I remember there were these like people who were like, hey, like it was calm. Wasn't that like a crazy experience? But it was so calm. It was freaking me out. Like it was just like... <sighs> you thought we were trying to suck your blood. Well, I thought demonic... Uh, parasites who had overtaken your being were trying to do that, to be fair. Maybe I was it was the case. I was so fucked up. It was the scariest shit by a million, not even, and nothing even compares yeah. to how truly mind bending that was. I don't, it, like, I wish I had a better story for like oh yeah like you know like, but it was so fucking crazy i mean it was a fucking breakthrough experience yeah, there's no doubt i broke through every time though i think because i do like i know how to smoke yeah that's what and it all I'm comes taking down three to three real hits each yeah. time uh, we loaded up that bowl it, it was you know we got you are there any drugs you still want to try besides 2cb uh oh i hear a lot about these designer drugs they all have different names but people will describe differently i think it's really about mm-hmm. like the effects if they're like documented mm-hmm. that would pique my interest like aspects of drugs i mean i don't know that there's anything like oh probably like mescaline yeah uh, yeah. yeah for sure i don't see i don't know i might be a blood sucker so i don't even want to suggest because i've given you some bad trips but <laughs> um We've given him some good ones. But DCK yeah. is another one that I think is. Yeah, like, I heard of that. What is that? DCK. I'm surprised we didn't try to turn you on to this sooner. You must have been out of town because we were hot on it. Yeah, it's yeah, basically yeah. like uh, one line K-hole for six hours. You just Jesus. rip a line you and kind of you're, feel drunk or you're like... just twisted for fucking six hours six hours. Like, Which you... is very scary because like it's easy to probably go way too far. Well, we've all been sitting there sniffing ketamine for six hours before way longer but but yeah but you have to do so much you're going back and going back this is just like (sighs) hits you and like the way you're feeling 10 minutes from it is the way you're gonna feel for six hours we stopped though because i trust mayor mayor's like i don't think this is good for us and i'm like yeah there's so little research on it that like i'm like i probably have one more dck experience i do yeah and we have I'm not going to even say yeah, yeah, We don't yeah. have that much. Yeah. It's probably all legal, too, because they're so... It new. was legal in Germany. That's, That's why how we, we, we got, got it. it. Someone sent it to us yeah. from Germany. Yeah. It's, it, this is where I hear is, like, the latest trend in drugs is the designer, like, special 
ones mm. that people are making for different effects. But it's so... What are the effects? Like, what what beyond great sex and music sounds great and, like, a people Molly... People like visual hallucinations. Oh, okay. People like yeah. a, dis, you know, a disabled thing. People like things that uh, mimic, like, opioid levels of calm. Mm. Like, there's tons of stuff. I feel um, like I'm, like, a little bitch being like, I just want to do 2CB because it feels like it doesn't have the same humbling properties that acid has. You know what I mean? So I want to, like, make sure that I don't, do that, too, uh, that I yeah. keep doing the humbling ones. Yeah. I, I, I don't know when I'll do acid again, but I'll probably do it in the not too distant future. I definitely like microdosing. I feel like that's, like, huge oh, yeah. and mini dosing. Yeah. Uh, that'll sneak up on you, too. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean... I, I like drugs. I can see them being a continued part of my life. Yeah. I still really like weed. I got into alcohol for a couple of months in Turkey. That's cool, too. Because you can't really smoke weed out there. You can, like, have edibles and uh, vape. Mm -hmm. But no, you can't smoke. I mean, you probably could, but, like, I do You just got to keep it on the DL. Yeah, I don't do that. I Yeah. It's crazy. You know what's a good alternative? A, a dark rabbit hole I went down on, on Reddit is uh, whatever the chemical in Benadryl is. Oh, DXM. DXM. Yeah, I had Bro. a uh, – when I did the five-week program at Berkeley when I was 15, there was this kid from San Francisco gave us our first acid trip, had like a sheet of sunshine, just incredibly high-powered acid, but we ran out like pretty quickly. It's like, you know, nine tabs or something. And uh, he started doing NyQuil. Um yeah. And to trip, and I've never seen someone more fucked up. Yeah. Like, what did he look like? Like, so, like a zombie, mm -hmm. like a cracked out zombie, like a literal, like pale. Have you ever done a robo trip? Is it kind of like a robo trip? It's like trip? very similar. It's fucked up. Like, yeah. It's a uh, fucking. The, the subreddit of that is one of the most twisted so fucking up. dark rabbit holes on all of Reddit, and I know my shit. The Benadryl subreddit? Yo, what the fuck? People first, you know, they fuck around, and they'll eat a whole thing of Benadryl, and they'll, like, come in contact with a whole fucking hallucinatory realm, and then they'll start getting this stuff pure, and, like, it just takes over their life, and they're taking the equivalent of, like many 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 boxes of fucking benadryl or whatever it's also and they meet toxic. shadow people <laughs> like that's, that's what it is they meet shadow, the shadow people why would you want to meet shadow people they have vivid hallucinations like a dude was saying he was like i took it and i said i'm just gonna relax on the couch and play candy crush and he's like i sat there and i played candy crush for two hours yeah, you're gonna see shadow people doing that he's like <laughs> and, and then i realized i didn't even have my phone it was upstairs like he just he was just like in a complete hallucination and and when I was a kid I think I took Benadryl a few times and I remember having crazy fucking dreams yeah like they're insane. always weird but when you take this sh this shit in epic doses and I don't recommend anybody no, do it no don't do it but uh, man the memes and everything and just like the 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 way that they depict the shadow realm is so fucking funny but that and that's why I ended up on there because it is it is funny but then there's stories of like a lot of people just ruin their life with this shit like they get addicted to it and I don't know why you would get addicted to going to the darkest fucking realm it reminds possible. me of uh, what your dad did the Jimson weed yeah yeah Jimson weed uh, also known as Datura Oh wow! Yeah, that'll fuck you. He up. didn't really even know what he was but doing. But that—that is what people. I think a lot of people assume acid is like where you just like see the Grim Reaper or yeah. where you see crazy creatures. Like acid's not really like that. Yeah, um, fuck that. Yeah, but there's other things that are like that. I don't know if our uh, if our drug exploration is gonna keep expanding. Like I always say, like maybe one new thing a year. <laughs> like w like this was the one year we tried two CB. We tried it. I don't know. It'll probably last be. year was uh, DCK. So last year was DCK. We did try GHB in between those okay. things too. Which yeah, is a weird one. I heard that's weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're not going to do it anymore. It doesn't come. Supposedly, like they say, like the people who gave it to us were like, "There's nothing bad about this at all. Like this is what bodybuilders. It's good for you." But like that's, that's not true. Like Everything GHB. has a cost. Yeah. No bodybuilders. Yeah. No, bodybuilders do use it. That's HGH. Human growth hormone. No, but they use GHB to sleep because it just knocks. If you t you could take a dose that just knocks you out, and it and um, something body. about the chemical rebuilds your muscles overnight at a rate that like you can't naturally do. So these bodybuilders to say swole 
Like, I know. Um, that's too crazy, man. No, I know, man. You can't become reliant on this shit like that. But I, I did know, like There's it. a lot of cool drugs. Weed works for me for the most part. Is oh, yeah. Is my preference. Yeah. I think I would probably would. That's the only one I could see doing. We've been getting into weed in the drinkable Long form. And it's a whole different Yeah, ball game. Tess is getting a lot of those <sighs> drinks. The thing is, is that... Uh, you mean like you make your own as no. like tea no, or you buy the drinks? Buy some lemonade Maine, from a dispensary. Like a is it lemonade. good? Because I can't have found like delicious ones yet. They all oh, taste really dude. bad. The we ones have one. I've had. Okay. Oh, my Man, God. I should have brought one I next know. time. We got lots of gifts next time. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, need yeah. to know what to bring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah weed's legal. Like there's going to be all these shops and grows yeah. coming out soon. Corporate weed. It's going to be fucking the Amazonification of fucking weed now. Listen, if it's good. I don't give a shit. If it's good, I don't, I don't think give it's a shit. Gonna be good, it's not going to be good. It's not been good. The only place it's been good that I know of is uh, L.A. But that's just because it's been around for so long. Like they have to compete with good weed. Like yeah. you can't have shit. No, weed. here it's like you know trim and crap and chemicals. And... Yeah. There's an organic guy I get from up here. He's really good. Yeah, but that guy's never going to be able to be in a dispensary. Yeah, but I don't need to be in a dispensary. No, me neither. I think I, I think the gray market will continue to thrive because I know I'm not changing up. I will. All I care about is if I know the person that is growing it or very close That's to That's very it. important for me. But if it's better weed, I will smoke that. That's the real truth. You like that good shit. You like smoking on that gas. The gas. You know, he gets that rapper weed. Wow, remember that stuff? $500 an eighth? No, like 120 an eighth. It was insane. What the fuck? It was so good. You'd come over with like this weed and you'd be like, I spent so much money on this weed. And I'd be like, what? It was like this much and this much? So little amounts. But very good. Rapper weed. Rapper weed. Moon rocks. Mm. Yeah, the good times. Mm-hmm. When I was rich. It's, I, now you're I, back with us plebs yeah i'm doing fucking podcasts. poor with everyone else is yeah. i got a podcast again <laughs> i this know is bullshit i don't know what a fucking bullshit i was sold a false hope you were staying in the penthouse you were taking private jets i was in so many penthouses definitely mm. private jets definitely like whimsically spending money i gave i think like a hundred thousand dollars away it was just it was honestly like you funded your executive producer on our latest yeah, movie yeah, exactly. american sunset there, there was like i i think it was just prep for actually having like a lot more money like yeah. i just needed to like there's no one i doubt my toes there's in. no one i would i believe in more that's gonna have money in this life so i like that's am, good that's good oh boost. yeah i definitely believe it too just because like i've already seen such ridiculous like one time would be like okay Maybe it's a once in a lifetime thing. Two times, it's like, all right, this is what are the chances? Can't happen again. Three times, it's like, all right, this is a thing. It yeah. will happen again. You just have yeah. to ride the dramatic roller coaster of like having so much and then having. Not well, you as get much. incrementally better. Like I had, I had, I left with enough this time where I wasn't like, I have no money immediately. 2018, yeah. I was like, I have no money. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I was like, how am I? I was so poor, so <laughs> fast. Um, well, because you were counting the the ducats that weren't real, like you were counting yeah, the I, stuff that you. I had did the same thing out. this time. I just didn't learn the lesson that like this probably will go down. 90%. Oh yeah, you texted me mm. one day. You're like, I'm a multi millionaire, and I'm like, if your money's all still in those accounts, I, I don't was, know. but I kept pulling out. I was pulling out probably, I mean, at least fifty thousand every month for a long time. I mean, there were days where I was making like $22,000 a day from the crabs, just autopiloting. Damn. And That's then, pretty uh, awesome. Well, the whole thing with me, because I've I've done my own wild rides, but with me it's commercial work because like something will come up and we're like, we're rich? What the fuck? You treated it the same way as us though. Like when we're rich, everybody's rich. Like yeah. it's all good. We, we're taking care of everything. You know, it, it's... But did it equal happiness? Like, I wonder that because this has just been our most happy year and we're as broke as we've ever been. And we don't have a place of our own right now. It was not but a good year for me. And I was as rich as I've ever been. See, how not that weird? But I don't think it's because I was rich. Yeah. I think it was just that was to highlight that they don't, they're not connected in terms of like how you're feeling. Because like, yeah. I know what 
why I wasn't happy and what my difficult times were. And they weren't money related. And that was something yeah. I had always kind of been able to use as like a partial excuse of why things weren't good. Mm. And I just like literally could not use it as an excuse. Like it was objectively amazing. Yeah. So, so you had I just to really deal with something. Yeah. I don't think there's, <laughs> I don't think there's, that has anything to do with it. Like in terms After of a like, certain point, they say like 70 grand or whatever right, it is to whatever get out that, where you t- you're not stressing about money. Is it, do- yeah, it doesn't matter how survival is different. Yeah. yeah once you're not stressing about money, your happiness doesn't increase after that point, but your happiness definitely dramatically increases once you're not stressing about money. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. And you know, it's definitely, I don't know. It's, it's such a weird, how people decide to like make money work is in, it's just weird. Yeah. It's not normal whatever we accept is normal is just a made up thing. Yeah. This yeah. is crazy. Well, I, it's, it's interesting. Cause I think we have the same, like I heard you saying before, we have the same basic value system. I'm like, we're not going to work. That's off the table. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. Work we're not sl- taking a job. Yeah. Um, like we're, we're not taking like a, we have to go off to a job every day thing. We like, want to hang out with each other all the time. So yeah. we want to work together. I try every other thing i have at my disposal before i would acknowledge that if i had to do it i would do it but i yeah. just like it's, it's, sometimes i have a it lot of really other tempting, things though sometimes not I'm like, to, I never just, to me i, no, I like me sometimes a little structure sometimes it's like all right some people just, really me, thrive take care with of it. this i i could not do it i go crazy pretty quickly i would get fired because i'm like a natural insubordinate even when i work for myself i would know? but i'm at yeah. the point where the kind of job i'd want to have would be like I'd want to have like a chill job. Like I've done the like high powered producer jobs and mom's like, why don't you go be a producer I'm for like in New York city? And I'm like, cause it steals everything. Yeah. I'm on the clock every hour of every day. It's crisis after crisis. It's like, yeah, I could go do that. But like, what is life? It's like, there is no life. It's literally like the line of work that I'm in is like, you give everything over to a job when it, ha- when you're on it and you get in this cycle of like, being for a corporation and like okay we're making your commercial and then this one and then that one and it's and it's one thing doing it for a company that we own it's like we're gonna batten down the hatches and get through this fucking thing it's gonna be a crazy couple months but we're gonna have enough money to fuck off for like 10 months after this so let's do it when you're just doing, when you're doing it for a company that's bigger than you you're like oh well i have to stay on the next job and the next job and never sleep and barely eat and do all the fucking oh, it's, it's what would you want to do then what did you, what, like, what's oh, like I want to, no like, stress? I'm excited about these weed dispensaries. I'm like, I don't even know. Like, I want a fucking 10 wanna, bud or something. Like, <laughs> you don't want to do that. Do you know how quickly? No, I don't know like, what I want to do. I like this. what we do. Like, we're, we're, yeah. Yeah. we're developing series for shows. We yeah, make documentaries. Yeah. We're, it's not like we're not working. We're making stuff happen. It's not like happening this second, but like, no, we it's have not a business. Really the time for that. My either. best, my best assets are investing in our skill set and Sean, like the business of Sean totally. as a director, like that is the best, like I would be taking myself so out of the market totally. if I didn't continue to invest in our capacity to make documentaries, no, no, movies, also series, awesome it. commercials. It's, a, it's like a, a lottery ticket every day that we've made all these movies, that we've made all these commercials and our reels out there and that there's jobs happening. It's like, it's, it's being a gambling addict. I think all three of us could I probably think, yeah. relate with that. Yeah, where that's you're definitely like, what it is. Like I'd like, rather. Oh, oh shit, it's getting low. And somehow I'm happier when it gets low. I like like it. a gambler. Yeah. You know? I'm starting to, well, I, <laughs> I am definitely not bothered not having some people. I think that really kills them is like they, that, that loss of, or that like, you know, it didn't stay great forever. Mm. I, I've always been pretty decent at dealing with that, especially when it comes to like abundance and money. Cause to me, it just literally feels like a game. Mm. And then it kind of gives a game. Like when we're getting low, we're like, fuck, we need to hustle. And we're calling up people we haven't like like old clients and stuff like that. It's like, all right, it's it's a game. It's like, how do you work with what we've done or what we do what, and make what? the best out of it? Because it, otherwise, I'm like back to doing what I was doing at 21. Like, not that there's anything wrong with waitressing. Waitressing was great, but like I go from like just back to the bottom of like what i was doing. <laughs> i can't imagine that though truly. no i but i loved it and i always feel yeah. like i have that and i like i like it's such a flow state when you're when you're 
uh, in service and serving people in a, in a restaurant. It's like you can totally just lose yourself. So I think it's like really cool, but it would be me letting, if I did that instead of what we're doing, it'd right. be letting, not living towards like, okay, we have these opportunities and these ideas and why not try to realize the ideas that we have? Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it. And our worst tendency is uh, getting in the mindset of uh, there's not a game. Like, oh, we don't want to, if there is a game, we don't want to play it, or there's not even a game going on, and we just, like, kind of keep away to ourselves, but, like, we're both really good at the game when we acknowledge there's a fucking game to be played. Like, oh, cool, like, the game is, like, uh, get freedom tokens fucking from, like, exploiting your labor and ideas. Like, okay, cool, let's figure out how to do that most efficiently. Like, we're we're really good at that, but then we'll get into these years-long, like, just, like, whatever, like, just the in-breath time. And now it's time to fucking do some shit, so. Yeah. yeah. Be patient these next couple few months, too. I just feel like it's definitely, like, uh, still waiting gestation time. Yeah. It just, like, I, I've noticed that you do what you can. You put yourself on the right track. You, you're you not negligent in, like, pursuing creative endeavors. But don't, you know, feel like something has to happen before it's supposed to i've been right. that's been coming up a lot during these readings and just like i noticed it for myself as well like it's not that's not the measure of like value or worth or respect or success it's just like you got to let the thing happen at its mm. own pace i, yeah. I definitely am i think that's that's that. where that navajo dude saying confidence is at the core of it because yeah. that's like like at, if that's your unshakable foundation like all the other stuff is just like the weather it's just gonna come and go you know that's why you try to identify with like the good thoughts and the good feelings you have as mm -hmm. much as possible and learn to kind of laugh off the ones that don't fit that image not in like a dismissive way but like just being like, okay all right. yeah this, this how you would take like you know kind of like an imbecile and a conversation that didn't know anything it just keeps piping up like you're not yeah i can't get over this sense of what we talked about though that we're gambling addicts <laughs> we're so addicted to the highs and lows yeah, that like I mean, the safety of it is like not interesting like, to us we like the vulnerability like we're guys, in the most we're in like we like to keep it like a little like oh shit. you guys are also like pretty you like a little brush here and there i feel like like the <laughs> gambling addict is like <laughs> You know, there's a degenerate spectrum. I feel like you guys are maybe tilting on that side, but not oh, yeah. too much. It's oh, not yeah. like, <laughs> it's not crazy. Like, you guys are pretty conscientious about your surroundings and, like, needs and stuff. Like, mm. I don't know. Who knows? There's something about living on the edge a little bit. I though. love living on the, I mean, I feel as though I basically always am. It just feels like a comfortable edge to be living mm. on. It doesn't feel dangerous. It doesn't feel negligent. I mean, and I have enough kids that, like, my sense of responsibility is at least <laughs> somewhat present. I'm not, like, a total yeah. sociopath. So, I mean, It, it was know. awesome, though. Like, do you, like, do you, it was awesome when I knew, like, okay, I don't have to worry about money because I'm working every day. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you never have yeah. to worry about, you don't have, you have like, to worry about money less problem. when you work. You're like, I'm working. Yeah, but working. it's not. It's not even, you know what's even better is when you're making $22,000 a day from doing nothing essentially, like yeah. doing like 20 minutes worth of work. That's better. Mm -hmm. And even then, it is not the final arbiter on like how Happiness. you're feeling yeah. on a given day. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm. So it's, it, they're not as linked as they would appear to be. Um, I enjoyed all of the things I did, but like, I probably would have traded all of them to just be like feeling better in those periods of time. Although, I mean, I do really like like the speakers I have. Are, are like, yeah, I, trade, I trade yeah. some depression for those speakers. <laughs> and I did. I don't think yeah. it was, I don't think it was the exact <laughs> change, but that nevertheless was the frame of mind I was in when I was getting a lot of this stuff. But like, it's kind of a decent exchange. Like those yeah. figures are really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And I think for us, like being close to our family has been like we're really enjoying it. Yeah, like as hard awesome. as it is, it's like we don't have kids so that, but I, that you get like this family thing from having kids. Like we are 
front lines family stuff. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually really beautiful because it feels like the service of cooking for your family and yeah, yeah. tending the nice. house together. It's like a beautiful. Yeah. Like, like my dad thought he was having a heart attack this morning. And I'm like, I'm glad we were there. I feel close to my family. And I was saying to Cass, like, this feels like real life. It feels like what we were doing before was some other fucking thing. I, I love, I love, but like this feels like. Family is very important. Very real. Yeah, very, I feel like, wow, we have to be present. We have to be patient. We have to be our, our best selves. And especially because like, you know, these people are getting older, our parents. I know. Luckily, I, I it's not to the point where I'm like really like noticing they're getting older. Like I've seen other people's parents like get visibly older or pass away. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not totally there yet, but I mean, I think about it, of course, plenty of times. And like, it's, it's nuts. Like, you know, it's a lot of responsibility that potentially gets placed in the children. Mm -hmm. You're an only child, right? Like I'm an only child. And when I was taking care of my mom this last month, cause she broke her foot, I was like, oh shit, I don't have a kid to do this when I'm old. Ooh. Well, there's that. <laughs> but what if your dad broke his foot? <laughs> you know, that's the thing. Like I do want to train my kids to do stuff for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I like. I'm, my dad has told me he's like, I had you so that you could help me when I'm old. I'm yeah. like, okay, <laughs> we'll do it. I'll do it. That <laughs> is smart. That is smart to do that because you help them and then they help you and then you help them or they help you and then whatever you. Help yeah, them. it's a nice cycle. Kids are pretty awesome. They're a lot of work. They're. <laughs> They be real little shit sometimes, which like all kids can. I would, would never want to paint too rosy of a picture of like having children because then like you'll always secretly hate that person for lying to you about yeah. what it is. You told me this was involved. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, it it is. I don't think there's many parents who genuinely would trade their kids in for whatever they gave up in terms of freedom and personal space. Ultimately, you don't really know. You didn't live that life, like whatever yeah. path you chose. But um, it's definitely like you'll be looking at it both ways, one way or the other. And it, I'm sure. I think you should just be happy with it, whatever your hand is. Yeah. Well, you, should, you should just say, I made the best decision for myself. Like I, if having kids, not having kids, whatever it is, you have the confidence it. in your own decisions, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the thing the with least kids you is, can do, that's not the question the life you have. Like, did I fuck up? No, that's such a boring narrative. Here's Ugh. the thing with kids is like, you're never really sure. Like, it's not one of those things where you're like, yeah. I will say though, you don't know if you're going to be having to pay for rehab in ten years. As weird as it, it sounds, like the Aslan, I was like very sure. About. I wouldn't have had that him if I wasn't sure about him. because yeah. that was like a crazy move. But other than that, like it's it's not so clear. Like every first time parent, like you can't know. Yeah, you, this is like you're not going to be like, oh, I'm 100 percent confident in having yeah. children. Like, okay, yeah. should at least want to have children. Mm. Yeah, you should want to. You should definitely want to, and you should definitely be able to see like what the positive benefits would be, but you definitely should be aware of what you potentially would be giving up. Also, I would point out that if you just like don't want to do the shitty parts or annoying parts of being a parent, whatever that is defined for you as a parent, then you can always have someone else do it. Like that mm. is an option. Like people forget that like Especially you if you're a that. baller like Noah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, not like, <laughs> like, yeah, but I mean, like, that is an option for people. Mm. It isn't, you know, you just have to be realistic, realistic about what you want your life to be and what you feel like you need to be either like a good parent at the least, but hopefully like fulfilled as a person. Like, yeah, I don't feel like I need to have kids, so I'm like I probably shouldn't if I don't feel like I. I didn't feel like have I to. needed to. Yeah, we. I don't feel that way either. I feel I would be jealous that um, I'm splitting my time with Cass now. You know. You think you told me that before, and I think about it a lot, and I'm like, I've never felt. Oh, like, I jealous. I get her. She, I'm her number one priority, and she's mine. So like, but it's I can't your, imagine it's there's... your kid. I don't give a shit. But you get That's your true. own girl. Get out of here. Aslan's like super on the boob. Like he's like super duper clingy. And like I I remember thinking that one time like I was I was like I, I've never like gotten mad at him. Like he's taking – I mean 
You just you wouldn't really see it like that unless like if Sean's already mad at even just the idea of it, you could trust that he'd probably be mad at the reality of it. You wouldn't. You're gonna gang up against me, aren't you? You (laughs) You're already like trying to fight your son. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Yeah, you probably wouldn't. (sighs) And it's also like it's such a crazy time. Like your relationship will change. You know. Yeah, and I think a little healthy dose of jealousy is probably everyone needs to have it once I'm in a while. I'm due for it. You're, yeah, you're due for a for healthy sure. jo- dose of jealousy. <laughs> it's a wild. It's a wild. You know how it is. That's why you start in your darkest, deepest psychedelic trips. You start yelling about your kids and who loves your kids. That's who you are know. my kids. Does anyone? Where love are them? my kids? Who are they? Where are they? Do I have? Kids? I remember. I couldn't remember <laughs> Gabe's name. I was that just was like, so funny. The other one. The other one. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. You're like Eli and the other one. Yeah, <laughs> well, the other one was fairly new to this world, yeah, so I could get it. He mean, was really young, but yeah. damn, I was fucked up. I remember I wanted to drive somewhere. Yeah. You grabbed yeah. the keys like you were a teenager. That was your teenager phase. You yeah, know? you went through all the phase, phases of God, uh, growing up. You so were a toddler. You were a preteen. You were a fucking petulant teenager that who makes wanted it, to leave. That makes it feel like accurate because that was like when I remember the beginning of the trip being like is reverting back to like pre consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. And then I must have just cascaded back somehow like a oh weird my God. It was too much. Well, you were just rebuilding your life and like being reborn and you were like a, a little f- in a fetal position and then you were able to crawl and then you were able to kind of stand and then you could walk and then you wanted to drive. And wow. it was just like we were just like calm down, calm down. Did you guys have you seen the the new Nathan Fielder thing, the, the rehearsal? rehearsal? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Did you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it was ridiculous. Yeah. Fucking It's crazy. It, uh, yeah, I think we haven't watched the last episode, and I think a lot of things come together in that. Nothing really comes together together, but yeah, yeah it's like that one's pretty intense. My dad was mad at me for telling him to watch it. He's like, I got sad at the end. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> dad, like, don't project too It's not much. as much of a comedy as Nathan For You was. It's not That's for all. sure. Nathan yeah. For You is laugh out loud, funny, front to back. No, this, this is more is like, insane. this is crazy. <laughs> you know, and like... It, it's uh, it's interesting. I want to see where it evolves because they renewed it for a second season. And I'm like, can this guy continue to build a career off of trolling out-of-work actors? Like, <laughs> it, you know what I mean? That's how they're finding these people. It's all, it's all it is. That's what Denise and I were arguing about because she was calling me naive because I was like, no, these are just people. And she's like, yeah, they are. But it's probably like Tim and Eric style where like these are real people, but like. Yeah, who are on be... some list. Yeah, that, yeah. You know. exactly. You, and you so... have some casting director. You tell them like, bring me your fucking yeah. craziest people. Yeah, because exactly. then they see it as a job. It's like, okay, I'm going to act. and I'm going to be on TV. And I'm not really acting. I have to and, be and that's the only thing, like knowing the behind the scenes of how that probably came together is the only thing that throws it off a little bit for me. Because yeah, it's a genre of people that all ultimately kind of are after the same thing and they have the same levels of desperation and insecurities and like they're all going to behave a certain way when there's cameras around and they think they're in a show and this and that but what it brings out is very uh, revealing of our culture and everything so that's it's interesting and i think he's hilarious and fun to watch I just want to see where they're going to take it because also uh, he's dealing with kids that's where it gets insane that's where like whatever pretense people have that's why i was trying to say to her i was like listen Whatever you think these people's motivations or how much they're acting or even being fed lines or like improv scenes like Curb, yeah. like these kids are not that good of actors. Like yeah. this little yeah. fucking six year old kid yeah. is really being just doing traumatized. Like, yeah. This is not <laughs> yeah. like a normal, like he's not acting traumatized. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. You should be able to tell the difference. Like you'll be well when you have a six year old. Yeah. And so I was just like, that's pretty fucking. Nuts. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm surprised uh, it didn't become more controversial than it did. He's a twisted joker. Oh yeah, yeah. He's definitely someone you don't you don't you don't want to fuck with that guy. He's man, so funny. Yeah, you know, he'll dig in on you and just. Whew. I love it. Yeah, I really love it. Um, Cass has had to pee for the. Last I know. Didn't you just say I like know, I had I to can pee? Just go no, no, back. it's all good. This was awesome. Thanks, Noah. Of Check course. out Synchronicity Podcast and your Patreon. And uh, check out our Patreon.com slash Church of Chill. Yeah? Peace, love, and magic, y'all. Peace.